I believe that there's currently a mass conditioning process going on, which is laying the foundation for the persecution of religious people, and especially Christianity, because it really goes against the grain of wider society at the moment. Plus, it is such an easy target. People know Christians are not likely to physically fight back in retaliation. But all people of faith are currently being characterised as simple-minded, uneducated, deluded, crazy, unbalanced and even dangerous. Now sure, there are some crazy and dangerous religious people about, just as there are in any community, whether that be religious or not. But to caricature all religious people this way is just downright dishonest irresponsible and malicious, especially when the majority of religious people tend to be moral, caring and law-abiding citizens. Disagreeing with what a religion teaches is fine, and people should always have that right to do so. But what is happening at the moment transcends this. Now this insidious indoctrination process of turning people against religious communities is currently being drip-fed to the unwary masses through a number of popular and accessible propaganda sources. For example, books. The new atheist movement has been producing bestsellers. An example of this is Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion. Dawkins uses very emotive and provocative language by calling religion a virus. What do you do with a virus? Some people may say inoculate against it, but then what to do with the pesky people already infected? The imagery of religion as a virus is especially alarming and makes all kinds of associations in the average person's mind. For example, a virus is a threat to us, it's something we seek to eliminate and stamp out. How do you stamp a virus out? By intervening in some way. This is linked to something else that Dawkins says, where he likens religious people who bring up their children in their respective faith as child abusers, because they supposedly force superstition and myths upon the child. Child abusers. Again, very emotive and provocative language. In a broadcast entitled The Root of All Evil, Richard Dawkins makes use of the virus imagery again, and this time links it with its threat to children. Quote, I am very concerned about the religious indoctrination of children. I want to show how faith acts like a virus that attacks the young and infects generation after generation. When it comes to children, I think of religion as a dangerous virus. It's a virus which is transmitted partly through teachers and clergy, but also down the generations from parent to child to grandchild. Children are especially vulnerable to the infection by the virus of religion." End quote. For children brought up in an environment where their parents' faith is taught to them, Dawkins favours the idea that society should intervene in some way to protect the children. Pretty chilling language when you think about it. Quote, it's one thing to say people should be free to believe whatever they like, but should they be free to impose their beliefs on their children? Is there something to be said for society stepping in? What about bringing up children to believe in manifest falsehoods? End quote. If society steps in in some way, one wonders how this would be. How should the virus of religion be dealt with exactly? Remember as well that although religion is separate from the person who follows it, for many it is intrinsically linked to the person's whole identity, culture and lifestyle, so we can hardly be naive to think that we can just stamp out religion and leave the individual who follows it unscathed in some way. Also, if religion is eliminated, what exactly would it be replaced with? Atheism? Secularism? Societies like this have had their moments in history before, and they didn't look too pretty. 
So, if religious people who teach children and young people their respective religions are guilty of child abuse, how are atheists who teach children and young people against faith and God not also guilty of the same thing? In fact, there's even an atheist summer camp for children. Another popular form where people are slowly being drip-fed into a hostility against religion and religious people is in the realm of films. Bill Maher and the film Religious, for example. Now people dismiss this as a comedy, but in actual fact, this is a very cleverly edited piece of propaganda, which basically says, religious people of all stripes and persuasions are nuts. Afford them no respect. The clever editing throughout the film means that Bill always seems to have the upper hand. Average Joe type members of the public are ambushed and interrogated with difficult and obscure questions about their faith for the purpose of being humiliated and mocked on the silver screen. When Bill does approach experts, he is asking them about areas outside their given fields of expertise. For example, he questions a Christian politician about theology. Bill focuses on some of the extreme ends of religious beliefs and practices to make the suggestion that all religious people are just downright crazy. At the end of the film, there's scenes of crazed religious terrorists and apocalyptic explosions. Ma is walking along and says, Religion must die for mankind to live. And he also says, religion is dangerous. The message, along with the imagery employed, seems to be pretty clear. Religion and religious people are dangerous, crazed lunatics who want to destroy us and the planet. So maybe we should get them before they get us. Forget about all the good that has been done by religious people throughout history and is currently being done. A comedy? Hmm. And if, as Bill Maher claims, he is an agnostic, why is he always mocking and challenging religion and not applying his agnosticism to atheism as well? Films like Religious and books by the new atheists such as Dawkins and Hitchens are only part of all this. It's everywhere, in music, on the radio, in magazine articles, fictional writings, and the TV. In Telegraph blogs, under the heading, quote, Corrie confirms an anti-Christianity trend on the box, end quote, by Jonathan Wynne-Jones, it is acknowledged that the soaps are conditioning people to view Christianity unfavourably, by portraying Christians as, quote, nutters, end quote. The anti-Christianity streak on television has been noted by a media blog TV scoop, where it states, quote, anti-religious feeling is now reaching saturation point on the box, end quote. It continues, quote, once faith has been made to look ridiculous, the attempts of believers to rebut criticisms will be met with deaf ears. And then, the line between ridicule and persecution becomes even thinner. End quote. This has been noted, remember, by a non-Christian secular source, the Telegraph. Now, as well as TV, there is, of course, the Internet, where anti-theist and anti-Christian sentiment in particular is rapidly expanding all of the time. On YouTube especially, atheists and anti-theist channels which mock Christianity and God are amongst some of the most popular YouTube channels about. I firmly believe that the current negative barrage of anti-religious propaganda that is being drip-fed through popular means such as literature, films, TV and the internet and absorbed by the masses is laying the foundation for the future persecution of religious people. The next generation of people who are influenced by all of this stuff are going to be even more aggressive in their anti-religious 
agenda. It was the intelligentsia who masterminded the wiping out of the Jews and others during World War II. And in the build up to this, German society was spoon fed a regular diet of anti-Semitic propaganda with a blitzkrieg of literature lampooning Jews as greedy and a threat to society which effectively brainwashed people for what lay ahead. In Hitler's Mein Kampf, in the chapters entitled War Propaganda and Chapter X1, Propaganda and Organisation, Hitler wrote, quote, Propaganda must always address itself to the broad masses of the people. All propaganda must be presented in a popular form and must fix its intellectual level so as to not be above the heads of the least intellectual of those to whom it is directed. The art of propaganda consists precisely in being able to awaken the imagination of the public through an appeal to their feelings in finding the appropriate psychological form that will arrest the attention and appeal to the hearts of the national masses. The broad masses of the people are not made up of diplomats or professors of public jurisprudence, nor simply of persons who are able to form reasoned judgment in given cases, but a vacillating crowd of human children who are constantly wavering between one idea and another." End quote. As to the methods to be employed, Hitler goes on, quote, The receptive powers of the masses are very restricted and their understanding is feeble. On the other hand, they quickly forget. Such being the case, all effective propaganda must be confined to a few bare essentials and those must be expressed as far as possible in stereotyped formulas. These slogans should be persistently repeated until the very last individual has come to grasp the idea that has been put forward. Every change that is made in the subject of a propagandist message must always emphasise the same conclusion. The leading slogan must of course be illustrated in many ways and from several angles." End quote. It was partly because of these slow and creeping propaganda methods unleashed on German society that so many were deceived into thinking that the mistreatment of Jews was good and justified. Now of course, the German people didn't just suddenly wake up one day and thought that the marginalisation, mistreatment and eventual killing of Jews was a good idea. No. The slow and insidious propaganda campaign from so many different angles bombarded and permeated society until the persecution that came felt perfectly natural and in fact good and justified to so many people. Is what we are seeing today with the constant mockery, negative caricaturing, marginalisation and total disrespect of religious people through literature, the internet, TV and film, part of a subtle, sophisticated and sinister brainwashing which is laying the foundation for a new holocaust 